Welcome to Pathway Church's online service. I'm Kelsey Smith, your online host, and with me today is our executive director, Becky Freshour. Welcome, Becky. Thanks. It's so good to be with you, yes. Kelsey, and I we are so excited to have you all with us today as well. So if you're new with us, we hope that you will come visit us in person. <laughs> Pathway Church is many locations around Sedgwick County. We have locations in Goddard, Valley Center, and in West Wichita, and we would love to meet with you. Absolutely, and if you are new, we'd like to invite you to text the word NEW to 316-444-4180. I will personally reach out to help you get connected to our app, find a location and answer any questions you may have. I even have a gift for you. Yes, you do. So when we say new, that means this could be your first time watching, or maybe you've been with us before and we just haven't connected yet. We want to get to know you. So go ahead and let us know you are here by texting the word new to 316-444-4180. And if you are part of the Pathway family, now's the time to hop onto the app, 
complete the connection card and share how we can pray for you. Becky, did you have a good Christmas? It was fantastic. Just such a great time with friends and family, mm -hmm. enjoyed some good food, and of course, celebrated that true meaning of Christmas. Yeah. How about you? You know, mine was wonderful too. I really take this time to slow down and kind of reflect on what the past year has been and kind of where I'm currently at. And of course, what's gonna happen in the new year to come. That's right, 2024 <laughs> is literally it's just crazy. right around the corner. And so with a new year also comes some new information. And we have some exciting news about the way that we approach adult small groups. Check out this video from Pastor Carter to hear more. Pathway family, I am so excited to share with you an important update regarding our home team's ministry. Starting this January, we are renaming home teams to Simply Groups. We've realized there are many different kinds of groups here at Pathway, and many may not even meet in homes, yet they are doing the super important work of caring and walking alongside each other. So as we launch into this new season, we want to invite you to connect with a group. Whether you are seeking to enhance parenting skills or delve into a specific study, or share a hobby, or find a support network, I'm telling you, we've got a group for you. So to discover a group, simply scan the QR code that's on the screen or visit our group's webpage. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop by the orange table at any of our locations because we know, friends, that we are truly better together. To sign up for a group, go to our group's website at pathwaychurch.com groups. It's easy to navigate and find your fit. Yep. You know, coming into the new year has me thinking about my resolutions kind of looking into the future um, and more so kind of what's going to keep me motivated as I go into the next year. I've seen that some people do this one word thing for the year, kind of like a mantra. So I did a little research, prayed a little bit been thinking about it. And I think my one word for 2024 is going to be intentional. Oh. That's a good yeah. one. I like that. What would yours be? So I, I try to do this every year, come mm -hmm. up with a word or phrase in a way that I can be more obedient to mm -hmm. God. And so my word for 2024 is surrender. Mm -hmm. uh, so really through the Gift of the King series. Yeah. And then my small group just read through uh, Psalm 25 together, and I just feel like that one's speaking to me. I, I want to surrender to God's will and not my own. I love it. I absolutely love that. You know, as we step into the new year, we are kicking off an exciting series called One Thing. It's all about how we can grow in our relationship with God by letting go of what's holding us back. That's, that's right. We often carry burdens, distractions, or right. habits that hinder our spiritual growth. But through this series, we're going to discover one thing that we can do to deepen our connection with God. Each week, we'll explore different aspects of our lives and identify areas where we can let go and allow God to work in us. It's going to be an amazing journey, and we invite you to be a part of it. So whether you're new to faith or have been walking with God for years or somewhere in between, there's mm -hmm. something for everyone in this series. So let's dive into this new series together and discover the one thing that will draw us closer <laughs> to God. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Enjoy.
Welcome, Pathway family, as we kick off a brand new series called One Thing. As we launch into the new year, it's easy to want to change everything at once. Set new goals, make resolutions, but how often does that really work? Instead, what if less was more? What if we stopped looking to change a bunch of things and focused our attention? Here is what we are going to focus in on today. As we head out of 2023, what is one thing that we need to let go of that is holding us back from our relationship with God? Now, 2024 is upon us. It's here. New year, new you. New year, new opportunity to make changes. To make changes to be more of the person that you want to be. Here's the hope that we all have this year. Whether we actually do New Year's resolutions or not, the hope is that our current self will not be our future self. You will improve, you will grow, you will be a better person, a better friend, a better leader, a better husband or a wife, father or mother, student, employee, a better athlete, better at your hobbies. New year, new you. New changes to be the person that you want to be so your future self is actually better than your current self. Now that sounds incredible, right? But that doesn't just happen. In fact, for most of us, I would wager that if we're not intentional, if we're not really focused, then our future self will actually be worse than our current self. Not better, but worse. You know, that is what the series is all about. This week we'll be focusing on being intentional on what we need to let go of in in our life in order to grow. And then next week, we'll dig into what we need to focus on in order to grow. You know, as I've been preparing for this message, I've been thinking about what God truly wants me to let go of in order to draw closer to him. And and I had a thought pop up, and it's actually a really scary thought. I, I don't even know if I want to say it out loud, but maybe Maybe God wants me to let go of being a fan of the greatest team in the world, the Kansas City Chiefs, right? I mean, that would be scary, but, but I mean, think about it. I would have a ton of my time back. I watch every game every week, so that's three and a half hours right there. Then I read articles, I watch highlights, I listen to podcasts, I spend time on it. I'd also have a lot more money in my wallet. I mean, I would lose like half of my wardrobe, so I would have to figure that out. But I spend money on Chiefs gear, and I go to at least one game a year, so I'd have more money that I could use for God's kingdom. And here's the last thing. I would look a lot more like Jesus, especially during the Chiefs games. I mean, I'm not always the nicest person during the Chiefs game. I mean, if Kadarius Tony drops another pass that gets intercepted, I'm not going to look like Jesus when I'm yelling loud, angry words at the top of my lungs, right? I mean, I'm going to open up a can of why can't you just hold on to the football? Now, now come on, I, I know you might be judging me a little bit, so let me put it this way. If Kadarius Tony impacts another Chiefs game by a boneheaded play, it will be really hard for me to show him the love and the grace of Jesus. So maybe, maybe God wants me to let go of being a Chiefs fan. You know, this idea of letting go, it reminds me of the monkey trap. I don't know if you've ever heard of the monkey trap, but it's a great example of how sometimes we don't let go of things, even if what we are holding on to will ultimately hurt us. Here's what the monkey trap is. Many years ago, when trappers and hunters used to try to trap monkeys, they were really hard to trap. So they came up with this way to use this jar. Now, at the top of the jar, it had a really narrow opening. And then at the bottom of the jar, it actually got a little bit bigger. So they would put food in there that the monkey would want at the bottom of the jar. So this monkey would begin to be hungry, and he would want this food. So he'd put his hand down the narrow part of this jar, and he'd grab onto the food. But as he grabbed onto the food, now he's made a fist and his hand is too big to get out of the jar. Now, it sounds simple. The only way he can get out of the jar is to let go of that food and to put his hand out of the jar. But 
It was what he wanted. He desired that food. So these monkeys, they would hold on to the food. And even when danger was coming, even when another animal was coming, that was a predator or a hunter was coming, and they would want to get out, that monkey just couldn't stop. He couldn't let go of that food. So he was trapped in this jar. You know, I think we do this a lot as well. There's something in our life that we want, or we at least lie to ourselves that we want. We may lie to ourselves saying that we need this one thing of, and we, we hold on to it. We've got a tight grip to it. Even when, when we hold on to that, it's causing us harm. It's causing chaos in our life. It's hurting us and it's hurting other people. We know it's dangerous, but we're not letting go of it. And all we'd have to do is to let go of that so that we could find freedom. So my question is, what do you need to let go of? What is holding you back from drawing closer to God? We're not going to figure it out ourselves. We're going to look at God's word for his wisdom, direction, and guidance. I want to go ahead and invite you to open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 10. We're going to start here in verse 17. And it says this. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him. He knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. You know, Jesus just finished teaching a message. And this man, he heard the message. Jesus is then leaving the area, but this man, he had to know more. He was curious. He runs up to Jesus. He kneels down. He's probably out of breath. He's a little bit desperate. And he asks this question. Now, before we dig into this question, let's figure out who this man is. You can actually look into the account of Luke 18 or the account in Matthew 19 that's of the same conversation. We found out that this man was actually a rich, young ruler. He was in his 20s or 30s. He had influence. He had a great job. And he was extremely rich. So this rich, young ruler, he runs up to Jesus out of breath. He kneels down and he says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? You see, he was very successful in life. And he was used to getting what he wanted. He was used to earning what he wanted. You know, I believe he wanted to know how he could earn eternal life here. So he's asking, what shall I do to earn eternal life? You know, Jesus answers this question by listing the commandments, which the rich young ruler already knows. Our story continues here in verse 20. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all of these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. You see, Jesus tells him that there is this one thing that you haven't done. One thing. And we're going to come back to this one thing, but I want to pause for a second because my one thing might be different than what it was for the rich young ruler. Your one thing might be different than what holds you back than what held back the rich young ruler. His one thing was his love and trust in possessions and in money. And that might be one of our things that you may need to let go of, but it also could be something completely different. You know, I think we can learn a lot and grow from Mark's account of Jesus teaching this rich young ruler. The first thing we need to do is to be intentional this year, to have our future self actually be a better version of our current self. And for us to grow closer to God is this. We need to ask the right question. To grow closer to God this year, we need to ask the right question. The rich young ruler did one thing right in this conversation. He asked the right question, a question that would draw him closer to God. You see, in 2024, we could work on a lot of different aspects of our lives, and we could grow in a lot of different aspects in our lives, but we could also neglect the most important aspect of our life, growing closer to God. 
You know, I love being outdoors and, and I love being competitive. So I could be intentional on being a better pickleball player, right? The greatest sport out there. I, I could be intentional on being a better basketball player or being better at QB 54. You know, I have the most amazing family, so I could be intentional on being a better handyman around the house to bless my wife. She would love that one. I, I could be intentional on being a better husband, work on being a better father, I could be intentional on being a better leader, employee, a friend, or a list of many other good to great things. And nothing is wrong with any of that. But the foundation of our soul, the foundation of our well-being, it is based on our relationship with God. It's based on you growing closer to God to experience the peace, strength, self-control, and so much more from Him. If we ignore that foundational aspect in our life, then it impacts every other area of our life. Ask the right question as you look to be intentional this year. You know, the rich young ruler, he asked, what must he do to inherit eternal life? There are many things that he actually doesn't understand about the good news of Jesus. But at least he is curious. He's asking the right question. He's asking a foundational question. So start by asking the right question. Start by asking a question that affects every other area of your life. And if you'll ask this foundational question, if you'll be curious and you search for the answer, then that will care for your soul. That will help you grow in all of the other important areas that you have. You know, the second thing that we can learn today is that we need to learn to let go. Jesus responds to him in the conversation and he says, there's still one thing that you haven't done. Go and sell your possessions and give the money to the poor. You see, Jesus knew that he needed to let go. He knew that he needed to let go of this one thing that is holding him back from following Jesus. And here's what we need to do. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to look in the mirror and to be honest with ourselves and ask ourselves this question. Here's the question that helps us get to the foundation of what we need. The question is this. What is one thing that is holding me back from growing closer to God? You see, we need to identify that one thing and then let it go. We all have one thing. Actually, we all have multiple things that are holding us back from growing closer to God. The first step is to identify it. Don't worry about identifying all of them. Just identify the one thing. One thing that's holding you back from looking more like Jesus. Maybe your one thing is screen time. You spend a ton of time on social media, reading the news, watching television, and just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And hours go by each day and you wonder why you never have enough time for God. Maybe your one thing that is in your way is a relationship. It's a friend that's just constantly putting you in a position to disobey God. You know what the right thing to do is, but this friend is always pulling and pulling and pulling you away from God. Or maybe it's a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Their words and their actions continue to pull you away from God. Maybe the one thing that is in your way is inappropriate pictures or videos that you look at, or it's drugs, it's alcohol, it's gambling. And you don't want to do these things, but you can't get away from them. Every time after you do them, you tell yourself that you won't do it again, and you just feel this shame and this guilt that's heavy and this sin is building up, and it has this grip on you, and it's holding you back from growing closer to God. The one thing is holding you back, and maybe this year if you just focused on it, then this year could be different. Or it could be a, a bigger bucket thing for you. It's control. Like you want to still have control over many things in your life. And you're not willing to hand those things over to God. Your words say you're willing sometimes, but your actions, they tell a completely different story. Maybe it's your lifestyle. You know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, that he's your savior and he saved you from a world of sin that you were living in, but you're not quite yet ready to follow him. You're not ready to allow him to be the leader of your life. You're not ready to change your lifestyle to follow his lead. You believe in Jesus, but you're not following him. 
Maybe it's all of these or it's multiple ones. Whatever it is, identify just one thing that is holding you back from drawing closer to God and let it go. Remember in our story, Jesus knew the man's heart. He knew that his one thing, he knew what it was, and he gave them the invitation to let go of that one thing and then to follow him. After that invitation, the man's face fell and he went away sad. He felt defeated. He felt deflated. He was searching and he found the answer, but he wasn't willing to lean into it and to accept the invitation to the answer he was searching for. He wasn't able to let go of this one thing and he just continued to circle the drain. You know, after he left, Jesus continued to teach his disciples. Our story continues here. Verse 23, Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. This amazed them. But Jesus said again, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently. I think he looked at them right in the eyes. He said, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But not with God. Everything is possible with God. You know, the last thing that we need to know is that everything is possible with God. My hope is that during this message, God has spoken to you. You have identified something that is holding you back from experience the life that God has for you. Something came to the surface. It's nothing new. You knew of this one thing. You've just hidden it. You've just forgotten about this one thing. But in this message, God is moving in you, and you know that it's time to focus on it. You know that if you let go of this one thing that's holding you back, you'll experience life and life to the fullest through Christ. You know, it might even be a little bit scary for you, or you just don't know how to do it. Jesus has words for you, the same words that he had for his disciples. He says that everything is possible with God. It is possible for you to let go of this one thing. It's possible for you to overcome it, not on your own power, not based on you trying harder, because in the past you've probably tried really hard, but based on you drawing closer to God. And through him, all things are possible. You know, here are two scriptures that are so encouraging that we can find forgiveness of our sins and also overcome temptation. Generally, the thing that we need to let go of and to grow closer to God is tied to sin or is just directly sin itself. Remember this verse, Proverbs 28, 13 says, People who conceal their sins will not prosper. But if they confess, if they turn from them, if they turn from that sin they will receive mercy. Take that one thing in your life. Go to God. Confess that sin. Turn from that sin. And you will receive forgiveness and mercy and so much more. Go to a trusted and faithful friend and confess it to them and allow them to help you overcome it. Then as that temptation comes back up, Remember what the Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. He says this, and I love this verse. It encourages me as I try to overcome the sin in my life. It says, the temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Through God. Through your relationship with God, through that vertical relationship with God, all things are possible. This is possible. It's possible for you to let go that one thing that is holding on to you, to let it go, take your hand out of the drawer and grow closer to God. Everything is possible with God. You know, as I was preparing for this message, I went to social media and I asked for help. I I asked people, what is the one thing that you need to let go of in order to grow closer to God. I love the responses and hearing from people and as they shared their stories. It was very encouraging, but it was also very interesting. 
you know, a large number of people responded and they shared what had held them back from God. You know, something in their past, something in their past that held them back, but now they've overcome it. There were stories of overcoming church hurt, lifestyles, control, guilt, people hurting them, a lack of surrendering, the feeling of having to earn your worth, and so many things. Here's what I found interesting. Many people only talked about what had held them back in the past. You see, they didn't mention what is currently holding them back right now. You see, it's way easier to talk about the sin that you had in the past than it is to talk about the sin that you are currently struggling with right now. It's easier to celebrate the victories that we've had, that we've overcome, than it is to stare our current struggles in the face. But to have your future self closer to God than your current self, you can celebrate the victories, but you also need to look your current struggles and turn them into victories. You know, one friend that responded to that post was Missy, and I love her story. Missy and Jeremy and their amazing family are good friends of mine. I actually ran into them several years ago while our girls were doing gymnastics and invited them to come to church. They said yes, and they came to church, and we were able to grow more as friends. Now, Missy is a gal who is curious and always has great questions about how she can apply different aspects of God's Word. So we went through a study together, and we began to dig into God's Word. You know, not long after that, Missy decided to take the step of baptism and to go public with her faith in Jesus. It was an incredible day. I want you to listen to how Missy responded to my social media post. I'm going to read this to you. And she starts off by saying how she was talking about a movie called The Mummy, right? It's a pretty good movie. It's got Brandon Fraser in it. It's a great movie and it's about, well, mummy. So here's what she says about what is holding her back, how she learned to let go of it. She said, before I was close to God, I would have said the guy from The Mummy that helps the evil mummy would have been an example of myself in a way. There's a scene where he's wearing all of these religious necklaces and saying all different prayers as the mummy is coming after him. And once he says the prayer of the Hebrews, the mummy says something about the language of slaves and decides that he can use him. It's a prime example of being too scared to decide what religion is right. That was my fear. I was afraid to put all of my apples in one basket. She says, now that I'm closest as I have ever been to the one true God, I feel like the closer I get to him, the more I'm tested. Easy way to put it, it feels as if the devil is after me, just testing my mental limits, relationships, and literally my happiness with giving me self-doubt and fears. I have came up with a new saying, though. I'm trying to be less human. I tend to be the excuse for myself, for others, that we are just human, that we make mistakes, we fall, we fail, etc. And we are human, I just want to be less. I want to be more like him and less of this world. You know, as I talked to Missy, she mentioned how she needs to let go of things in her life that is taking up valuable time, but they aren't bringing her life. They actually can be a drain. So right now she's working with this sin in her life and she wants to let go of those things so that she has more time to invest in the things that are really important to her, like God's kingdom and her family. I love God's story through her as she's been on this incredible journey since choosing to stop searching for all the religious things, not just to believe in Jesus, but to follow Jesus. Not only does she understand her victories, but she continues to focus on growing closer and closer to God so that she can be less human and to be more like Jesus. You know, talking to Missy and preparing for this message, God has really been challenging me to let go of something so that I can draw closer to him. Now, God did not speak to me and tell me to let go of being a fan of the Chiefs. I mean, that's crazy, right? Like, thank you, God, for not putting that on my heart. And we all know that if I was a fan of the Bengals or the Raiders or the Broncos, then absolutely I think he would have told me to let go of cheering for them, right? Now, I apologize to any of those people that are fans of them. God still loves you. Despite your imperfections, remember, God still loves you. 
No, I, I've been thinking about what I need to let go. And I've had many, many victories in my past of overcoming sin, but I am so far from perfect. You know, I might be a pastor, but I'm just like everybody else. I get caught up in my own junk all of the time that creates barriers in my relationship with God. 2024, here's what I'm going to let go of so that I can grow closer to God. I'm going to let go of sleep. There it is, right? Now, I still need to sleep some. That's essential. But I'm trying to change my habits and my sleep routines. You know, a few years ago, I was in a fantastic routine of getting up at like 4.30 in the morning. Most every mornings, I would do a variety of different things. I would start my day off with true, uninterrupted time in God's Word. I would go to the gym. I would listen to podcasts. I'd listen to music. I'd read different books. All that helped me grow closer to God. It was just a special time for me. And due to that routine, man, I truly believed it helped me grow closer to God. I'd have more energy. I would be more productive. I lost a few pounds. But, you know, now I realize that due to that routine, it truly did help me grow closer to God. Having that uninterrupted time where I did focus on him. Now, I wake up right before I have to get our eight-year-old and our three-year-old ready and out of bed to be able to start the day. And I try to fit in all of those other things, but I tend to get interrupted. Sometimes I forget the busyness of life happens. You see, there's power in asking the question, what will I let go of so that I can grow closer to God? I'm going to be intentional about this. My wife knows about it, and she is the ultimate accountability partner, right? Like all wives are. I've prayed about it, and I've confessed my sin of selfishness and of wasting time and wasting opportunities, and I'm going to lean into God to help me change this routine. It's actually a little bit scary because I love sleep and the routine that I have, but I believe that God is telling me to move in this direction, so now I just need to be obedient. What about you? What will you let go of so that you can grow closer to God? Let me encourage you in this. This message is really like only half of a message, just a little bit incomplete. You're going to be missing out if you don't listen in next week. Pastor Carter is going to be teaching on one thing that you need to focus on this year in order to grow closer to God. Don't miss it. Don't miss this opportunity to grow closer to God. Would you bow your head and pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the words and the wisdom and the guidance that you give us through your word, Father. Father, I pray that for each and every one of us listening to this, you revealed something to us. There's something that's been creating a barrier between us and having that relationship with you for us growing closer to you. Father, and there may be many different things, but I pray that each individual here, that you can speak to them and help them identify that one thing, that one thing that they need to be intentional with this year and to let it grow so they can grow closer to you. Father, that's the I will statement that all of us can have, that I will let go of one thing to grow closer to God. And if you're listening to this message, and you're willing to commit to that, you're willing to commit that you'll let go of one thing to grow closer to God, I just want you to make a decision in your heart. Right now, just make a decision that I'm committed to let go of that thing. And I'm going to confess that and say that one thing to one person who can help me grow. Maybe it's someone I volunteer with, someone in the small group with me, but I'm going to confess that to one person so that I can let go of this and experience that freedom this next year. I know there's other people in the room that you've never made that decision to follow Jesus. Maybe you're like the rich young ruler that you just continue to try to earn your way into eternal life. Or, or maybe things have happened in your past and the sin has created a barrier and you've never known how to get over it. And it's been based on what you do. But maybe God's been speaking to you and today you realize it's not based on what you do. It's based on what Jesus has done for you. That when he went to the cross and he died for your sins, if you believe with your mouth and confess that Jesus is Lord, scripture says that you will be saved. If you're ready to accept that invitation, if you're ready to let go of following your own way and you want to name Jesus Christ the leader and the savior of your life, 
I just want to invite you to repeat this prayer in the quietness of your own heart. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I have sinned. I know that I've been living a life that I wanted to. But today, I let go of that life as I name your Son, Jesus Christ, the leader and the Savior of my life. And I will make it my mission to learn everything about him, to look more like Jesus, and to spread the hope and the peace and the joy and the good news of Jesus Christ to other people. Let me say a prayer for those who just made that decision today. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for how you pursue us. We're grateful for how you speak to us. We're grateful for the invitations that friends give to have people listen to a message that they can come here to accept your invitation. Father, I pray that a church family would be able to gather around these people, that they would be able to make good friends with them to help them as they begin this journey of following you. Father, we love you and we ask all of these things in the loving and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. If you made a decision to accept Jesus as your personal Savior today, we'd love to hear about it. Please share your decision with us so we can connect with you, get you a Bible if you need one, and answer any questions you have. Just scan the QR code on the screen and remember, this is just the beginning. We are so excited about your new relationship with Jesus, and we want to celebrate it with you. Yes, we do. And, and we want to thank you for joining us today. We hope you found something valuable in our time together. If you have a story to share, a prayer request, or questions, please know you're only one step away from connecting.
Oh